where women were like, you know, if you had were given the choice of the same guy, one a virgin, one not, what would you go for? Mm. And there was this kind of idea that, yeah, the one that has more experience. Um, in marriage, you will most probably still be able to say no when all of the pressures are amplified because you've been through that gym um, of, of pressures that have come. You've yeah. been able to stand. Yeah. And then I always say that Adam and Eve figured it out just fine. So you don't have to have sexual experience from the past in order to have a fulfilling sex life. Mm. Um, in marriage, you can grow together, patience, persistence, perseverance, selflessness, service. <laughs> um thinking as well on on the back of that and kind of um like fruits in in your marriage also i guess it'd be good to hear from you like some of that and also you know maybe some of the worries that people have before getting married you know like if they don't if they haven't you know had those sexual experiences then how will they know if you know they'll be compatible in marriage or or even thinking about something we mentioned before the conversation was that um, I, I'll, let, I'll let you talk about it. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, the, the um, <laughs> perceptions that had, had arisen from some people. Yeah. I think the, the first thing, just to answer your first question, is that I think we have so many examples about how not to do it. Why not be an example of how to do it? Um, I'll always remember, I remember I was speaking at University of Portsmouth, um, and I was sharing a bit about my testimony with um, David and I getting married. And at the end of the session, I went to the toilet. And I was in the toilet and some ladies came in, some young ladies, um, and they were like, you know, it was good hearing her story and that. <laughs> it was good hearing her story and that, but that's just so unlike, that's unattainable. Like, there's no guys like that. You know, and these are these girls that were talking, they had no idea I was in the cubicle. I was like, should I open the door now or should I open it later? Um, eventually they left and I was just, it really broke my heart to think that this is, these are girls that are 18, 19, 20 that think something like saving yourself until marriage or not having sex in your courtship is something that's unattainable. And so I really think as Christians, as believers, we need to really hold on to the truth of God's word that says, actually, he's given us the power to will and to do good. If God has said that this is the path that he wants you to take, then that grace has been provided, not by your own boundaries, but by the Holy Spirit, first and foremost. Um, he gives you the grace to do it. So I really want people to know that. And then in regards to the second part, if you want to answer that. Um, just um, remind you of mine as the second part. <laughs> mm -hmm. so then on, on the second part, what I was kind of alluding to was, so you, you spoke- Oh, trying before you buy it. Oh yes, trying yeah. before you buy it. Yeah. Also, you know, the idea, so when we were speaking before the call, you know, you said that, um, you shared that there's some, there's a perception around that women, and I'm sure we could talk about guys as well, but women would, would a lot of women would rather be with someone who has had a sexual history rather than being with someone who's been like, abstinent or, or is a virgin. And I thought that was so like yeah. so interesting. So it'd be good to like have you shed more light on what you think about that. Yes, yeah, so I remember being a part of a conversation a few years ago where women were like, you know, if you had were given the choice of the same guy, one a virgin, one not, what would you go for? Mm -hmm. And there was this kind of idea that, yeah, the one that has more experience. and. Whilst I understood what people were saying, I think it's really unfortunate that we set ourselves up to fail like this. Um, this kind of idea that you have to be with someone that has experience and not someone that can gain experience by being married to you. Why be with a guy that has had experience with 10 other women, but no experience with you? <clears throat> and, you know, it, it, just, it just doesn't make sense to me, but I think that there is a lot of pressure um, that we place on ourselves um, in terms of not fulfilling God's word. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, on the um, try before you buy, or you know, wanting to see if it can work prior to making the commitment, it was for us. It was more of a concern from Ify. Um, I think it was during our courtship prior to engagement. Yeah, you mentioned it uh, to see what my mindset was regarding you know the amount of physical touch that we had at that time. And um, because there wasn't there wasn't much at all apart from you know a greeting of a side hug, then uh, she was like, "Well, yeah, how do we know that side of the relationship is going to work?" Mm -hmm. um, but me, you know, knowing myself and you know having faith as well in what God can do, it wasn't a concern at all. So I, I just reassured her that 
you know, it, it need not be a worry. Um, we will work it out once we do get to that, that, that stage in life, all will be well, because we're also well informed that, you know, a courtship is a place to be studying one another, you know, and finding out things about that person and the people around them. And should there be something that uh, is not conducive towards you being together, then quite simply, you know, you should part ways. So you should be doing as much research as possible um, prior to actually making that commitment, which should be for the rest of your lives. Yeah. So, yeah, David definitely reaffirmed me that no, we'll be fine once you reach that. And by God's grace, we are fine in that department. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think when it comes to sexual compatibility, I think what people need to do is unpack their own views of sex individually before marriage. Um, what's your ethos on sex? Remember we spoke about that when we were courting. What do you think God says about it? Because I hear of Christians that get married and they're looking at each other like, you know, this is dirty. And it's like, well, where did you get that idea from? You know, what do you believe about sex? And what does the word of God say about sex? Unpacking your previous sexual experiences as well. Um, all of that baggage needs to be unpacked and dealt with and sifted through well before marriage. Otherwise you enter marriage and you're disillusioned. Um, and then I always say that Adam and Eve figured it out just fine. So you don't have to have sexual experience from the past in order to have a fulfilling sex life. Um, in marriage, you can grow together, patience, persistence, perseverance, selflessness, service. These things will make for a great sex life. Yeah, and um, you, you can also ask where appropriate, you know, for um, some guidelines, some light guidelines, especially prior to marriage. But yeah, the advice is always going to be there once you, you, you get to that point. Yeah. Um, you know, we had certain types of conversation during our engagement and then, you know, very close to the wedding day, we had other types of conversations, um, which are more detailed, you know, about our experiences and so on in the past. Um, and our expectations. Yeah, yeah, expectations as well. Um, and not expectations to the nth degree, because I remember if you're asking a certain question and I was like, yeah, you know, that's, that's not necessary to answer right now. Um, but um, because certain types of conversation can just lead to, you know, the sin um, growing into, you know, anything, depending yeah. on whether it's over the phone or you're in person. So we were quite um, conscious of not wanting to to kind of go in a direction that would cause us yeah, to muddy the waters, yeah. Yeah, and I think just a key thing to just add is to get around couples that can give you the real, real on what um, this is like in marriage, um, yeah. you know, to walk you through, yeah, this is what it was, this is how I adjusted, this is how um, I, yeah, this is how I adjusted in marriage. So one thing that was helpful for us was having married couples around, well, helpful for me, especially wives that could be, could, that could answer the questions that I had, the curiosity that I had um, mm. before marriage and certainly in marriage, um, you know, so that was really good. Mm. I mean, that's, that's really helpful. And it's, it's crazy because if people often say, you know, we don't talk about sex in the church, we don't talk about sex in the church, but everybody has a view of sex, right? And, and and if that's and, and if we're honest with ourselves and we think about where have I actually learned about sex from? For most people, they've learned about sex from pornography, they've learned about sex from music, they've learned about sex from TV, film. But all of these areas that people have been taught about sex have been generally outside of the covenant of marriage. So they've been from a very consumer perspective, a one-sided perspective. They've been completely removed from any sort of selflessness or growing in intimacy with someone, the responsibility of it all. So naturally your view of it is gonna be warped by that kind of self-seeking perspective. So, and, and it's crazy how for some people, sex is almost like the single point of failure in a marriage. So if the sex is bad, the marriage sucks. And if the sex is great, the marriage is gonna be perfect. And from what I'm hearing and learning, that's just so far from the reality. What else? Yeah. I mean, 24 hours in a day, Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many hours of those, minutes of those is sex? Yeah, like, and you're not going to have sex every day. Yeah. Um, they could, I mean, yeah, some people be... do. <laughs> 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 There's going to be situations, you know, like a little one where you might have sex for a certain period of time. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, how, how can you then rely on sex mm -hmm. to be the foundation of, you know, a relationship that has right. so many other components it doesn't make sense and we could even unpack the term bad sex and good sex but i feel like, I feel like that's you know let's throw yeah. it over to the cart daniels 
that's a that's a conversation for uh, for another that's a whole another episode in itself i'm sure to a lot of people what you've just shared about these boundaries so it can easily sound like it sucks all of the joy and the life out of dating like mm. that it almost like people will be thinking oh, you didn't go on dates so what did you do so i guess my question would be did you feel that in your courtship these boundaries actually were like life sucking and it's just like when you finally got married you're like ah now we can have fun or was it were you still able to enjoy your courtship with the boundaries you had you know what it was enjoyment to a certain level mm. um like every single time it was like i have to drive away i was like mm. <laughs> like driving back home and it's like oh i'd rather be going to your home um so there was enjoyment yes you know have fun outside but i think everything has it had it had a limit mm. um even in trying to express how much you appreciate and value this person in your life you have to hold back to yeah. some degree yeah. you know what i mean because you're thinking what's appropriate for the stage that we're in and mm. um, the amount of time that we want to spend together the closeness physically that we want to get to mm. there's limits on all of it so whilst yes it's nice to be able to express yourself um there's a limit to it and you're constantly thinking about okay pull back pull back pull back because what your whole body wants to do is not what you should do um and so that can be quite tough and i think that that's why paul does speak about your body like but if you're burning um to get married i don't think anyone was designed to be for a long period of time in that place of just keep limiting yourself just keep limiting yourself just keep like there has to come a place of yeah that freedom um so yeah it was enjoyable make no mistake but what's more enjoyable is marriage. Yeah, and um, we had a, a framework that we were using, um, which, small plug, people can find via a book called Hello to I Do, which is now in a book form. Um, and navigating it, from. Uh, yeah, navigating from Hello to I Do, and the author of that book is uh, Pastor Eugene Adebayo, or just so, um, Pastor Eugene Ajayi. And, um, we had the content of that book in our minds from you know, a ministry that, that uh, I used to attend called Kingdom Connections where it was spoken about, where it was advised that, you know, if you're looking to date in a godly way, then this is the way you can do it. So in my mind, there were always milestones that I had to achieve before getting married. And that's what I was focusing on. So for me, it was enjoyable because I always knew that there was a certain level of enjoyment reserved for marriage, but I need to do this, this and that until I get there. Uh, and then I had some personal things like adapting my home, you know, changing my bed from a double bed to a king size bed, putting in more storage, you know, observing that if you had loads of books and I, I had my own idea for how I was going to bring them in and the show was, I remember in, I said to myself, I'm not going to change that bookshelf. I'm not going to do that either. And I was speaking to show in December, uh, the month before we got married and he was like oh you know if he's got a lot of books you know <laughs> so then i just was like okay you know and i i threw myself even more into making amendments to make sure that you know she could come and feel like this is her home not just my home that she's moved into um so because i had you know all of those things in my mind that needed to be done i didn't feel like i was missing out on enjoyment apart from the temptation of course of um sex uh, other than that which was just a trick anyway a trick of the mind a trick from the enemy um, i didn't feel like i was missing out mm -hmm. sure. how about on your how about on your side <clears throat> you know i i didn't i didn't feel like i was anything out um primarily because i just knew this i knew what was coming later and that if there's anything i don't know maybe because I used to be a sprinter, um, that, you know, th there are certain things that you, you withdraw yourself from for the sake of what you esteem, for, for the, you know, for the sake of the, the, the medal that you want to get, right? And I feel that um, in, this, in this instance, there's joy in Christ, number one. Um, Paul, uh, Paul said to Timothy, build, train yourself up for godliness. And that was what's most important. And that is the whole process as well. Like this is part of it here. This is, a, this is an opportunity, you know, presented to me to practice that and to, and to keep on that. So I found, I found joy in Christ anyway. I was already content. Godliness and contentment is great gain. So I was already content. Um, and I knew that, 
you know, uh, from listening to previous sermons as well, from Mark Driscoll, for example, um, even though there may be a bit of controversy around him at the time, but I just found that, you know, he mentioned something that I used to laugh at quite often, it was the fact that, you know, we talk about dates and stuff like that, but those things are like bugs, or, you know, um, in our minds that do not allow us to make the right decisions. Um, uh, and you also said, you, you talked about going to the cinema. How are you going to communicate? Um, you may know what kind of movies you like, but that could be through conversation. It doesn't have to be through sitting together and stuff. And you mentioned a few other things as well. Combine that with some of the principles in that Hello to I Do book as well. Mo and I were actually the lab rats for that book. Um, so um, I didn't feel in any way that I'm missing anything out. And if anything, it made the whole, pro the whole, you know, consummation, everything moving forward that much sweeter, you know? I think the idea of fun is also one that's quite subjective and it's something that we, whether or not we agree to this, no one just guesses what fun is. The idea of fun is always fed by something that we've seen or heard or we've been told or something we personally aspire to. I feel like we weren't having fun. Um, I wouldn't say entirely no. Um, but if I looked at it from a world's perspective, I'd be like, oh, but we weren't going on dates, we weren't doing what other people were doing, we weren't doing this and doing that. But then that's them and this is me. So why am I trying to make myself like everyone else when I could be a trailblazer? Um, and I think it's just that having that kind of mindset that kept um, that kept us going in that. We, we used to call it bragging rights. Oh yeah, I remember that. Like, why do we have to follow everybody else? Set yes. standards, you can do it. And um, I think from there, just thinking about that, I didn't feel like I was missing out on having fun because I knew how much fun there was. Well, I had an idea um, of how much fun there would be. And I'm not gonna lie, it's been so much more fun in marriage because we had the right foundations um, in place. And that just makes a huge difference. It's, I don't know if anyone has been through the phase of spending all of your student loan in, in three weeks and then having to manage noodles and Gary. Um, if that was Gary, it would be great. Um, cornflakes and mixing hot meals for the rest of the term. And you're just like, why did I punish myself that way? Just because you wasted your student loan so early. Or like even further back in school, you take your lunch to school and then on the way to school, you don't eat, eat what you have in uh, lunch. You're meant to eat for lunchtime. You're going to be hungry for the whole day. Like why punish yourself? Why not just wait? So, um, no, I knew there was more coming. So it's just like, just wait for it. Just, just wait. I think something, something that I loved about what you said um, and being, being a trailblazer is so important because, you know, when you think about it, most couples, most couples date like they're married, but most married couples get divorced. But at least 50% of married couples in the UK will get divorced. So clearly doing what everybody else is doing is not the fast track to a healthy marriage. Clearly, you know, and um, another, another thing that I took from that is the idea that if you're not intentional about marriage being the goal of dating, then you're going to really punish yourself. Because unless you're moving forward, you're just going to be struggling. So, yeah. and I guess like it begins with a mindset before you even enter that makes these things not only possible, but fruitful. Um, so, show and Mo, you just muted yourself, but I need you to unmute yourself so you can come back to answer this question. Um, <laughs> you mentioned that, you know, it laid good foundations in your marriage. So I'd, I'd love to know what, from, from all of you, what fruits have you seen in your marriage based on, you know, what you did in your, in your courtship and how you, how you courted, what benefits have you seen? Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, I think it just, there's nothing greater than having conversations with your spouse and agreement. I don't know how, I, I, ah, I don't, yeah. there's that for me anyway. I, I, I know like for more as well. In like, marriage, people are gonna butt heads anyway. In yeah, marriage, you're going to yeah, have um, yeah. heated conversations as some people yeah. like to call them. Um, but then where you know that you already spoke about it, at least you have a foundation to go with. Exactly. And it brings this sort of peace of mind Exactly. Like I was saying to someone recently that every flaw you had before marriage, 
I'm not typing. Ask any married couple. The flaws you have prior to marriage, if not dealt with in it's marriage, amplified. are amplified yeah. by go as high as you want to 80, 90, 100% in some cases. It's like the little things you could ignore at one point. Somehow in marriage, you don't, you can't ignore anymore. The little things that didn't really matter much, you thought you could kind of, you know, just push to the side prior to marriage. In marriage, you're like, no, actually, you need to stop that. Um, so it's, it's, it's not. It's easy when you have the right foundation. So things like having peace in peace of mind, exactly. um, because I know what his principles are. I know what his limits are. I know he knows mine as well. Um, I know who his accountability um, people are. He knows who mine are. He knows exactly what to say to me, when to say, I know what to say to him. Um, I know who to go to. He knows who to go to. Uh, what else is there? Just, it, it gives you so much peace of mind. Um, now that's general, but even in terms of the physical aspect of things, um, we know that we're in this together, if that makes sense. So, so far we've been on this journey together. We've gone through the hard times together of saying no, which means that when it comes to enjoying that cake that we've kept for so long, we can both sit down and be like, let's enjoy this cake. Let's actually see how we can do it. Cause we, we've learned how to, what's the word? grind on each other we've learned how to really mold into each other from the places of dying to self which means that when we do come into marriage we're able to now be like do you know when we did this we actually did this well done now let's enjoy what we have to enjoy together um so it gives you peace it gives you there's power in agreement there is yeah there's a joy that comes as well that i can tell my daughter like listen mommy did this i can tell my children mom and dad did this so you can are we not human we're not perfect but it's possible um so yeah let me i'll stop there yeah I mean, just it just provides a fantastic environment for the children to grow up in as well yeah. and that's where the change starts but it starts with you first ensuring that you know, your 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 decisions are guided by principles founded on god's word yes. which stands when all else falls who can stand but him yeah. his principles stand his principles remain um so yeah definitely the fruit of that is like everything is that those that Mo has mentioned um i don't mm -hmm. even know what else to say man but i'd say yeah that I, when when getting mad I, I remember speaking to someone in the ah early stages no no towards towards the goal towards, towards the time Mo and i got married and i said to the gentleman that i was speaking about at the time that i don't feel like i have to settle or you know i think it's time now to get married because she's been asking for it and i've just been delaying it and there's nothing like that if anything i'm like I, I let's get married yesterday you know um but i'm just waiting for everything to work in the right timing um there's no there's nothing in the back of my mind that thinks oh well it could be better if there's nothing like that you know and and and, and that's not i feel like you know when god gives you a gift it's something that he gives with no sorrow, right? So I can definitely say, and I've said this to her many times, and she's like rolling her eyes. I'm like, you give me peace of mind. I don't have to worry about nothing. Seriously, like putting on putting my will in place. Like if I had to, let's say we had to, let's say I had to do that, I would not be worried at all in putting her name on anything. Mm. Do you understand? I think I'll just end with this. Um, I heard someone say once that faithfulness. Um, feeds commitment. <laughs>